Emma Lynn Catapang Cepeda was killed in her Istanbul home on Sunday night. Police say her estranged husband, Emmanuel Peter Cepeda, admitted to shooting her in the head and told officers that he intended to kill himself as well. But the 35-year-old victim in this case had sought protection from her killer. A protection order had been granted to protect Emma and her three children from her estranged husband. Guam Legal Services Executive Director Hank Parker says that while protection orders are enforceable, they can't force the respondent to obey the order. But the problem is, ultimately, when you have somebody who is willing to re rise to the level of committing a murder, a piece of paper isn't going to stop them. And that's the problem we always face in these cases. Our, once we get our protective order, there isn't a lot we can do to enforce it other than bring the guy back for contempt to court. Guam Police Department PIO A.J. Balahadia tells PNC that he's received no indication that the Cepeda protection order was violated prior to Sunday's shooting. The protection order was filed in October after Emma Cepeda accused her husband of holding a knife to her neck and saying that he was going to end her and their kids' lives because she was going to turn him into police. Emmanuel Cepeda was also charged with two counts of felony terrorizing and family violence as a result of the October incident, and he was arrested. But on November 28th, Emmanuel posted $5,000 bail and was released and ordered to stay away from Emma. Parker would not speculate as to whether Cepeda should have been allowed bail or not, saying that with the number of domestic violence cases on Guam, it's difficult to know which defendants are going to be dangerous. Some of them, it's obvious. They, they come into court with a huge chip on their shoulder and they talk big and everything else. But in, in this case, he had held a knife up to her neck. Before, held a knife up yeah. to her head, neck, pointed a gun at her in the past. Uh, so they were aware of the possibility. For Parker, the most troubling thing about the Cepeda case is that Emmanuel Cepeda should not have had access to a gun because it's a federal offense to be in possession of a firearm if a protection order is granted against you. And if he had a, a license to carry a gun, he would have been told not to get one, not to carry one. So how he got it here is going to be an interesting question. Uh, was it secreted from the police or whatever? The problem is you can have a, when you get the restraining order, even if you know there's a gun, you put it in the restraining order uh, to pick it up. But if he denies he still has it or whatever, um, how does the marshal deal with it? Meanwhile, a Lee Shelter program manager, Sister Bridget Perez, is saddened by the news of Emma's death and she urges victims of domestic violence to get help, even if they are being threatened. It's true, some women doesn't want to report. They don't want the police involved. Mm -hmm. But I think um, for our greater protection, we need to do that because that's their job. They know what to do. And uh, if they call us, of course, we don't have to, you know, call the police. We're already securing for their safety. And then from there, we can give the women time to process all this before, um, you know, before we go out to seek other helps, because we take women also, if they want protection, we take them to Guam Legal Service or Public Defender or, um, you know, whatever they want. But we give them time to think about all these things because it's when you're traumatized, you can't think. So you need to uh, give them space. Emmanuel Cepeda is scheduled to appear in Superior Court tomorrow on the felony terrorizing charges and on February 28th for the charge of murder. Betsy Brown, PNC News.